Hello there, it's Graciela here. In today's video, we'll be learning how to use JavaScript code to upload into our Dataverse forms to customize model-driven apps. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to either hide or show a tab in our form depending on a value in our table. We have this table for projects lists and here we can select what's the project type. Depending on the project type that we already created as a choice column, that we have an idea, single company or multiple companies, we have another related table in which we have the projects and the companies that are related. In this case, for example, that the project belongs to multiple companies, what we want is to show a tab for all the companies so the user can select the companies that belong to the project. So for that, we need to create a form and we are going to be using this main form. So let's open it. And the first thing we're gonna do is to add the project name and the project type as part of the form. So let's add project name and project type. And we're going to hide um, the owner and the name is an autonumeric column. So we're also going to hide it. And then we're going to just add a new a tab component that is here that is just a one column tab and here we are going to name these companies and we are going to uh, put it as a backend name as tab companies and here we are just going to add um, we're going to call it select companies and here we are just going to add a subgrid that is going to connect to the companies based on the project so you can see that it automatically recognizes the table that we want to work with. In this case, we don't care much about, about what's the view. So in this case, we can either select one or use the default. So let's just hit on done. And you can see that now the subgrid was added. And now we have the project name and project type. And now we can save and publish. So the next thing that we need to do is to create the model driven app in which we're gonna have this form and also create the code that it's going to either hide or show this tab here under uh, the form depending on the project type. So the first thing that we're gonna do is let's just go to the solution and add a new model driven app. So here let's do model driven app and then let's um, assign a name. And then let's click on add a page. We're gonna connect this page to Dataverse table and let's look for the projects table, which is here. And then let's click on add. And finally, let's just save and publish what we have here. And for now, let's quickly execute. So we can see that before adding our code into the model driven app, the tab will show regardless of anything. Let's click on new. And here you can see the company tab is just shown there. So for us to fix that, we're gonna create some JavaScript code. And for that, we already have the base here. We're gonna call it FX hide show tab. And we're gonna pass the execution context as parameter. This is default uh, behavior in model driven apps. And then what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna create this variable, which is always going to be form context. Then here, the value type in this case, uh, for example, it can be project type. We can name this variable however we want. And here we're going to extract the attribute of a column name. In this case, the column name that we care about is the project type. So if I click here on edit table column, and then if I scroll down and see on the advanced options, I'm gonna see the logical name. That's the name that we need to use here. And you will find this code as well in the description of the video in case you need it. But here we will need the logical name of the, ta of the column that we want to get the value for. And then the second part is which is the tab name, which is the one that we assigned when we were working on this, in this case, it's the tab underscore companies. So let's replace that here. Finally, we just need to know what's the value under the project type that is going to define if we see or we don't see the tab. In this case, let's go back to general 
project type, let's edit the column again and let's have a look at the choice values. In this case, remember that we have idea, single company or multiple companies. So in this case, we want to show the tab if the user select multiple companies or just hide it if they select something else. So let's paste the value here. And this is pretty much everything that we need. So now for this code to execute when we are working with the model driven app, we just need to be inside the form editor. And then here we can go to JS to the JavaScript section. And here we can click on add library. And here we need to click on new web resource. And if you have this already in a file, you can just upload it. Or if you have the code, just like I do here, I can just copy it and paste it here. That would be the same as uploading it. Then in the file type, we're going to select that this is a JavaScript code and there we're going to call it companies tab. And we just need to remember what's the uh, function name that we assigned because we're going to call this in a minute. So now we have finished everything and we click on save and publish. And now we can uh, look for the company tab, which is the one that we have here. And then we hit on add. Once we have that, we can go to the events section of our form. And then we need to add an event handler. So when we save on or when we load a new record, it checks what's the value and it shows or hides the um, tab. Because it's not enough to just add the library. We need to let the form know when to call this function and which function to call. So let's add a new event handler on the on save. And you can see that it automatically recognizes that we have already this library here. So we just here need to let it know that we are going to use the FX hide show tab. We click enable and then we make sure that we pass the execution context as first parameter and then we hit on done. And I also want this to execute whenever the uh, form loads. So we know that if the row already exists, it checks on opening the form if it should show or hide the tab. So it's just the same, just add the function pass execution context as fair parameter and then click on done. And this is pretty much what we need. We're just going to just uh, save and publish. And now let's execute again our application. So let's go here to projects and let's open a new tab. And let's click on new. And here I just realized that um, I was missing a parenthesis here, so we need to uh, replace, unfortunately, the code. So let's go back to edit. And here we're missing a parenthesis. So let's save and publish. And after that, we will stop getting this error in our model driven app. So let's save and publish again. And let's load again the model driven app. And you can see that we no longer get the error and the tab is automatically hidden because we still don't, uh, we still haven't selected any project type. So let's do project test. And then here, let's select multiple companies. And then if I hit on save, now it will show me the company's tab. If I go back and I create a new one that doesn't have uh, this company type, so let's call it project two, then single company, hit on save. And nothing will happen to the company tab because for this one, we don't need it. If I go back and I open one uh, project that has multiple companies, you can see that the company tab shows. And this is how we can customize some model driven app components. The JavaScript code that we create may be different depending on whatever we want to achieve with the customization. So in this one, you can see it's uh, quite simple. There are some others that are a little bit more complicated. But the actual process of uploading the library and the process of connecting the functions with the different events in the form to either on save, on load, or we can either also connect events for the specific fields. For example, if we update this value for something to happen immediately after it's updated without having to click on the save button. That's also uh, something that we can do. And that's a standard process. It just requires uploading the code and then connecting it to an event.
like we did in this video. And that's it for now. I hope that this was useful for you. See you next time.